Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. Today Eric and I are going to do a topic that Eric doesn't know about, but will be uh, very primed for because uh, it's a thing that we have been having to talk about quite a bit lately, and I thought it would be nice to just make a whole video about it and uh, kind of discuss a little bit more at length. Uh, Eric, people keep asking us how we think the X-Men are going to be integrated in the MCU. Okay. And I made a list of ten questions about what we think the future of the X-Men in the MCU is going to be like. So we will touch on that, we'll tackle that bit of it, but I also want to go into some more specific details and try to see if we can make some predictions. Okay. We'll make this kind of uh, one of our uh, legendary like uh, uh, speculation casts. Are but a little bit. Is that a thing? We've done lots of oh, them. Oh, 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 well, and we've done them for we, X-Men. We, we've done them for X-Men, we've done them for... And we started with that. Yep, That's the yep. first thing you and I ever did. Yep. That's part of why I thought of this. Yeah. And uh, Dan and I do them frequently for Spider-Man. Every time there's a big Spider-Man uh, change or a, or, or a big news about Spider-Man, we tend to do that. So anyway, um, putting 15 minutes on the clock, we're going to try to run through these 10 questions in that time. And Eric, the first thing I've got is, uh, do you think, this is really in no particular order, do you think, uh, now that we know uh, pretty much for sure that Wolverine's going to be cast immediately? I don't know if you know about I that. I did not but realize that. Yeah, uh, that, that's a thing that Laura Shuler Donner um, oh, oh, I didn't see that. like I a did week ago, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, by the time you guys see this. Um, now that we know for sure that that is happening, or like, or like I'd say 98%, um, do you think Wolverine uh, can ever be as popular as he was? Especially with like the Deadpool craze and all of that. I do. Do you? And I, Interesting. Yeah, well, first of all, I think I think that's hugely disappointing. I do too. We have, But that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll take over, right? Like, No. They might be smarter about it this time. But I wanted at least one movie with the original five. Like, that is, to me, the most classic, obvious way that, they, that Marvel could do it different is start with the original five. Do a movie with just the original five. I didn't think of this, and I, obviously that's what I want. Too. I mean, Wolverine, I guess, could start solo, right? And then we can start smaller, but yeah, just because they're saying they're casting him right away doesn't even necessarily, I guess, mean he's in the first movie. Um, because we do that kind of thing quite frequently when we know we're dealing with a big role, right? Like, like we've, Black Adam. we've had Black Adam. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I uh, cast for <laughs> we do this like a, a lot. decade. Yeah. And did you see that news? Recent. This is just is trying to get a captain's log. Is, is he gonna be in Shazam too? No. The news is that he. Well, we don't know that. The news is that uh, he's definitely not appearing even in an after credit scene for Shazam, oh. uh, because what they're apparently what they're doing is so totally different. That they didn't want to set him up there. Okay. What they're doing in a sequel, or what they're doing like in his movie? Is I just he, mean, is he getting his own movie? Or? He's, they're still talking like he's supposed to get his own movie, but I guess like the the Shazam movie is so totally different from that. They just didn't even want to set him up there. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. I do think it, which which immediately makes me go, okay, is it possible they're in separate universes? That, that would be, be weird. Be but anyway, getting off track. Um. There could, I, I think it would be a mistake and very strange to do a Wolverine solo movie right away after Logan. That's not a thing you'd want to do. But it's possible that you could do a movie with the original five that just has him in the background or sets him up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see that. But you think it is possible that if you if you cast the right guy. No, I, 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 I definitely think he's recastable. If they're smart, they'll cast him short. And they'll cast him unknown. Which yes. is what Liefeld said the other day, and I agree with him. Because uh, people were kicking around popular names, and he was you like... Should, you shouldn't ever, like, phrase a sentence like that. I know, isn't that weird that I said that? But I, but I saw a tweet where Liefeld was like, you you idiots, uh, he was a, he was an unknown in the first place. They're, they're not going to do that. Uh, it, people, uh, people, uh, people are just, every time they disagree with you, they're just going to, like, out of context, be like, you want Liefeld said the other day, and I agree with him. <laughs> um, no, no, I, I, I actually think... I think Wolverine is inherently law of averages. It was bound to happen sometime. I I think Wolverine is inherently cool and interesting and like I think Wolverine's overdone, but I still think Wolverine's a great character. Yeah, and and even though we've had X Men movies without him, he's still to, to people somewhat synonymous with X Men. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's I definitely think it's possible to do again. Um, it'll be interesting because like like the MCU's damaged Spider Man. We're like Homecoming's big. Homecoming's not what you would expect it to be in relation to what Spider-Man's popularity has been for the past 40 years. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it's not, it's not in the MCU, but like, like the Spider-Man movies hurt Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think Wolverine could have some of that, where, like, Wolverine will never be 1993 Wolverine, but 
I do think he could be more popular again. Because right now, I think he only appeals to, 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 to you know, like, like 20 and up, 25 and up. Like, you know, people... Basically, anyone who grew up after the 90s X-Men show, I don't think Wolverine is that just, It might take a while for people to disassociate that character well, maybe from the actor. A, maybe, after the, maybe after the movies. Like, I think anybody that's like a kid after X3 comes out, I think. Sure. It's kind of the end of the Wolverine cycle. No, I think so too. But after that, a lot of his popularity is that actor. A yeah. Lot, a lot of it is Jackman. And, yeah. I, and I do think it's going to take a while. Like, you saw that with Maguire, and we didn't even all agree on Maguire. We yeah. all agree on Jackman. Yeah. Yeah. There are very few people you'll meet that, that even, even people that are purists and wish that he was smaller and scrappier, they still throw their hands in the air and say, yeah, but Jackman's great. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I've not met one person that doesn't like him. Uh, second question. What does the MCU have to do to make X-Men more relevant than Deadpool? Because I think Deadpool is... I don't want to say flash in the pan. I think that can keep trucking for a while. But, like, is it just a matter of time? Or can they come out the gate and make bigger numbers than Deadpool? I think they can. Well, I mean, I think they already do, right? Like, Deadpool doesn't make more money than, than X-Men. Yeah, it does. Does it? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I thought it just, like... I'm pretty sure the last one made more money than any of the other X-Men movies ever have. Okay, I thought it was just like a percentage I read thing. I could be wrong. Because the Deadpool movies are cheaper. But I, I thought, thought they like I, made I I more that. money, like, but like didn't make more money. Does that make sense? I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah, percentage-wise, but I'm pretty sure dollar amount it made. Now, I might, okay. I'm not okay. looking okay. at anything right now. No, but, no, no, I, I absolutely. But, forget, but even forgetting numbers, you can't disagree that Deadpool as a property is more popular in the public than X-Men right now. No, it but just we've, is. Spent, we've, spent, we've spent a decade and a half suppressing X-Men. Yeah, that's true. Um, Except for except for Deadpool, no, um, I no. Yeah, Days of Future Past was only five years ago. Yeah, but even then, like, I think the Days of Future Past was seen as the other. Like, I don't think Days of Future Past was like popular again, like with the youth. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that's true. Like that was a movie for us. That was a movie for people that grew up with those movies. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. We grew um, up with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and like the, I don't it was think the that, last Harry Potter movie for us. Yeah, right? or yeah, or Toy Story three. Like, I I I don't think that other pe I, I don't I don't think younger people necessarily like maybe they saw it, but like. That's, that wasn't a thing for them. Like, it didn't all of a sudden make them be like, oh, I'm going to go check out X. Like, we've, we've been kind of hurting X-Men for a while. I, I mean, X-Men now more than ever is the franchise for this culture, right? Like, they are the person persecuted minorities, like, stand-in metaphor. Sure, like, yeah. I think you can do a really Yeah, and the culture is real sensitive yeah. to that and talking yeah. about it a lot right now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, I which is, I guess, also why you wouldn't kind of make it do the again. first five X-Men. You would want to do the giant size where you have all these different people from all over the world. and Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a big, a big diverse cast. That would cast be cool if, if we had just the straight up giant size X-Men team, because we've never had all those people together. That's a cool idea, too. Nightcrawler, uh, Colossus, Storm. I like that. Yeah, Colossus yeah. has never gotten a star. Well, I guess in, in Deadpool. I guess the other thing, because I'm mostly just talking about culturally before I'm talking about money-wise, but... Um, I just thought of this, Deadpool and X-Men being under, I mean, they already were under the same roof, but bear with me, like, like it, being MCU and all with those characters and, uh, and, you know, in that universe and all under Disney's roof, like, it might, they might do a Deadpool and an X-Men that speak to each other more, where he's not kind of doing his own thing and has his Are own universe. Are they going to do an MCU Deadpool? I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. That but we would just carry on Deadpool like he is, and Deadpool would mention that he's that like they're not in the same universe. I'm but making they are. no assumptions. Oh, okay. About okay. that, I assume that we won't do. I make no. I think you can do it either way. I think. I think the Deadpool we have could remember everything that has happened and integrate an in MCU simultaneously. I, I think he's a fourth wall breaking character. I think it's really easy to do. Sure, but it it would be R. And, like, you, that can't be important to the rest of the MCU, right? Disney is already... That's assuming that we're that we're wrong and they are making that Raider R uh, Black Widow movie. Because if that happens, that changes everything. That's true, but I don't believe that. I don't Raider. believe it either. Um, but I'm just saying that, like, if that ends up not being the case and they are going to make Raider R Marvel movies, then anything's on the table for Deadpool. That's, that's fair. He could cross back and forth. I mean, like, anything could happen. Deadpool and Falcon. Okay, I'm never going to get through this. Uh, that's great. Um, well, now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. I want that so bad. God, don't say things! Just stop saying things! How, how are... Uh, and let's touch on this briefly because we've talked about it before, but I think we do have to mention it in this video for people that haven't watched um, our Q&A videos. Um, how do we think... Not just not what we want them to do necessarily, but what is the most likely scenario of how they're integrated in the MCU? I think there's two. Okay. I think one is... 
they're an alternate dimension and they won't actually cross over that much, they'll be separate. I think... I think that's the less likely of the two. I think more likely is they'll just all of a sudden be mutants, but they'll act like there's always been mutants. And they'll, they maybe even will retroactively say that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are mutants. But like, they will go backwards and say there's been mutants this whole time. I don't think they'll just all that of a sudden... That would like, be a, a straight-up retcon, though, yes, because we know how they got their powers. But you could say, like, they're predisposed to that. Yeah. Like, something like that. Sure. Like, I don't know. But, but... Is um, it possible they do it like the Inhuman thing and just and just wipe away Inhumans because that was never on the big screen anyway? Like, I... Because initially I kept thinking, well, now they're stuck because they can't do what, you, what you'd think they would do where, it's, where they just basically do, like, something like Terrigen Mist, but it's not Inhumans and they just have a bunch of people that become mutants. Because, um, like we've talked about before... The metaphor is different, but you can kind of make it work. You can kind of do it where, like, people just start looking at the people who have that differently, like they're a, l a lower class, like they're a minority, mm -hmm. um, even though they weren't born with it. I mean, I think there's a distinction. I think it's better if they're born with it, mm -hmm. certainly. But um, but you but you really think that, that they'll just they'll just conveniently be like, oh, we had them all this time. Like, yes. Wow. Okay. I, I'm not saying for sure Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. I'm saying that's possibly. But I think we'll go backwards and be like, oh yeah, they, 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 they're always they're like. They're that's always a doing. mistake. What else are they gonna do? It's much more a mistake to just all of a sudden go and now there's mutants. Unless there's an impetus for it. I don't like there being an impetus. I for don't it. like it either. But I still, I still say that's more likely the way they'll do it. Okay. Um. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's, it's, it is really hard I to say. I guess I could do Ultimate X-Men. It could just be genetically engineered. But you're retconning a lot when you say there were superpowers, and I realize that Iron Man doesn't have super, superpowers, but that people knew about supernatural stuff before Iron Man. Is like, it? Is it more of a retcon than Agent Carter, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Is it more of a retcon no, than but that's the one working big, for S.H.I.E.L.D.? No, because that, that's not a retcon. That's a secret. You see what I'm saying? Like but you're talking shields, about public powers. Shields newly formed no, in the that, Iron Man. No, that's a problem. Yeah. But that's not as big of a problem as this is. Yes, that is the one big retcon. Yeah. But, that, but it goes all the way back, like, it goes back decades. Right. And Captain America, but, I don't think, exists in that first Iron Man either. Like, there has already been a public superhero in this universe. It doesn't feel like that in Iron Man, but there was one. Yeah. yeah. There were trading cards. Yeah, but the problem is they still treat it like suddenly superpowered people are coming out of the woodwork and to act like there there have been powered people publicly and people know about that, that is a mistake. Well it's probably not public, it's smaller. I don't know. Well then I don't think there's I don't there's, there's no good, good way to do it. And we've talked about there's this no before. Good way to do this. And and I know we're kind of regurgitating the conversation, but I wanted to do that for people that have not heard us talk Unless about it. Unless all of you at this point are just like waterbenders and things like that. Like like real small scale So this goes to uh this speaks to a thing that you said earlier. Um the, the like this is clearly going to be true if they make it an alternate universe, but if they don't, do you think they'll still kind of treat it like its own separate universe, like we, like even though it, it's integrated, where occasionally we'll connect other characters, but by and large it sort of feels like it's its own thing, like we do in the comics a lot? I don't, just because up to this point there isn't a precedent for that in the Marvel Universe. Like, it's not yeah. like, I'm trying to think of, exa like, I, I, can't, I can't, because everything's kind of so different, but it's not like we have, like, Nothing's cordoned off. Yeah, it's it's not like we have like Thor and Doctor Strange, and I'm trying to think, and Guardians over here, well, especially because and then Iron Man and Iron Man over here. Yeah, yeah. I if they do, it'll be a new way for the Marvel Cinematic Universe to go, and not what they've done before. Although maybe the best way to do it because it wasn't in the plan. We know that they've planned up the next five years of movies, and X Men wasn't on the table. Yeah. So now they have to change things, or at least they've said that. I mean, they haven't announced everything, so. You know, well, Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige said before Infinity War that they have they they have through twenty twenty five planned. Right. Like Spider Man, they have to change it, but I wouldn't think you would do one X Men movie. I, you just got a lot of female characters. Like I imagine we will get at least a like Rogue Gambit movie, like things like that. Maybe maybe that Kitty Pride movie. Ben, this was supposed to be working and on. That's, that's actually that actually uh, speaks to a question I'm going to have here in a minute. Um, so, Eric, I want you to predict what like. Just, just four or five mutants you think are most likely to be in that first movie. I don't want to say just straight up five because who knows how big the team is. But oh, man, like, I'm not gonna get that that Madrox movie. I forgot they announced it. The oh yeah, Michael one. Right. I hadn't that's, that's not gonna happen. Though. Yeah, because I because because I, 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 I wanted I want I, I want him. But I don't want him. In the they're not gonna, they're gonna they're not gonna do that out the gate. No. Right. Uh, but anyway, so what what mutants do you think that team is most likely to be comprised of? The first X Men film. Yeah. Like, we want five, we want the original five, I don't see it. No. 
No. Okay, so Storm will be there. I think Kitty Pride will be there. Yeah. Especially because Kitty Pride's never been well represented on screen. Um, I mean, people and, like the actress, but you're right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I really like her in Days of Future Past, but she still doesn't get to do enough. Wolverine will be there. Professor X will be there. Scott will be there. I don't know if Gene will be there. I don't know if we if we do the, the Phoenix ride a, a third time around. Uh -huh. I don't know if Gene will be there. Or can you have Gene Gray and just never just avoid the Phoenix, just never deal with it? Because if you have them in MCU and we're doing all the like cosmic stuff with Guardians and everything, like they're gonna be tempted to do Phoenix again at some point. Yeah. Um, but but now they'll have the Shi'ar and stuff. Like, yeah. They can do all that now. Yeah. Um, We might get some of the more, like, underrepresented ones everyone's been waiting for. Like, we might finally just get Gambit. Like, they might just be like, look, everyone loves Gambit, here's Gambit, and if we do Gambit, we're going to do Rogue. And she'll be... She, we might even connect her to, to Captain Marvel. That would be great. Uh, yeah, but, that and, would be and cool. actually, because of the Captain Marvel connection, I think you're onto something. I think that that should be maybe toward the top of our list. It's also possible um, they just do the 90s lineup and Kitty Pride said you believe. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, not that part, but but the, like maybe just '90s lineup because by and large that is still the most popular team. It's weird that there aren't a lot of characters that have supplanted any of them as really popular characters, right? Yeah, um, as I mean, the like, most popular. Like there's a couple of classic ones, because and especially not new characters. Yeah, except for like X twenty three. Um, yeah, and uh, I do imagine seeing her fairly early. Um, the. The two big ones that I can think of off the top of my head are, are, are Nightcrawler and, and Colossus. Yep. Are only in episodes of that show, but aren't part of the Prime lineup. I also, I Nightcrawler's probably on that team, right? That's like, what I was going to say. People and love Nightcrawler. I don't know if you know this, Nightcrawler's like big with women. That's a yes. thing. Yes, no, I know that, yeah. Uh, and then, probably not as a hero right away, but I see Emma Frost early. Or Mystique. Although we've done Mystique to death at this point. But the more comic book traditional Mystique. I see Emma Frost early because she is really popular with fans and we didn't do her right. Ooh, I would love it. Twice we didn't do her right. I would love it. Twice. If, yeah, because she's an X-Men Origins Wolverine. Is she? Oh, yeah. She's, uh, what's her name? Like, Firefox's, uh, Shadow Fox's, uh, sister. She's the blonde chick in a cage. Cause she turns. Oh into the yeah. Diamond. Okay. Yeah. But she's 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 running down a hallway. I mean, that's what she that's what she does in that movie. Um, Cyclops is also no, in that movie. I would love it if we jump in and we already have the Scott Emma relationship. Yeah, that would be great. I don't know. How you, well, there would have to be a lot of comedy before you get to that, so maybe not. Okay, but. so we're already past my fifteen minute time sure, limit. Sure. You want to knock these out really fast? Sure. Will just we can just do basically quick yes no on these. Uh, will Disney, based on the popularity of uh, at least Legion. I uh, attempt anything on television. I mean, maybe with their streaming service. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. God, that like like that. Like that, they should. That would be the place for an X Factor show. Yeah. Like Detective Agency, X Factor, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, they they should be doing that. Um, you you said Professor X right away. I did write this down as a question. Will they avoid X, uh, um, Professor X and Magneto right away? I think they will. Uh, they will avoid Magneto right away. I don't think you can do the X Men. I don't think you can set up the X Men without Professor X. Unless they, unless they've been at, operating in the shadows for a decade. Yeah. Uh, which I guess they could do if they go with with uh, with your with your thought that they're gonna say that they've just been there all along. If Maybe they've, they've been, been there stuck all along, in the Savage Land. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, do you think? that they're liable with, like, including spinoffs and things to try to make um, X-Men a franchise that comes out once a year. No, but I could see it being every other year. Okay. But also... But like, we're doing Spider-Man every other year, year right now. Like, with as many characters as they'll have in that stable for X-Men, I could see yearly X-Men movies. Well, but, but Spider-Man's because of Sony. Right. That's not their call. Um, I guess... I, I don't see X-Men... Okay, but they're not going to wait three years for, for the next Black Panther. Like, the popular ones are going to come out every couple of years, right? I, I Maybe. I mean, that's not really how we've done it so far. We've given, Is it not? We've given one every phase. Except for Spider-Man, who's going to get two because of Sony. Let's see, Guardians 2... Guardians was 14, and 2... Was it 16 or 17? Was it 17? I think so. Okay. But the, okay. but like the, the phases cycled over... 
Um, I think it still ends up only being like three or I'm, three years between each. I'm movie. not sure how important the phase idea really is at this point. Like, yeah, it's weird that we're still doing, especially because I wasn't even thinking. Especially about because it like as that, we're like, getting to end game, it feels like the end of phase one. It seems doesn't like it? The movies that are popular, they kind of rush quick. Like Iron Man three was 2012, right after Avengers. Iron Man two was two years before that. Well, yeah, but they hadn't really like figured out their model yet. There's more time between Winter Soldier and Civil War. Yeah, and Dark World and Ragnarok. Silver War also probably uh, had a lot more lead time. Yeah. Um, I don't think we will see, like, an X-Men movie, but I could see a, a, once a year or once every other year doing, like, X-Men, Rogue and Gambit. But that's what I'm saying. It's like including spin-offs. Okay. Do you see okay. it once yes. a year? Yeah. yeah, I do. That's okay. what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. I said including spin-offs, yeah. yeah. Um, who will be their first villain, and will it be Sinister? It'll be Mr. Sinister when yeah. we play by Brian Cranston. <laughs> It should be. And he hasn't done an MCU character yet. No, so. and he just keeps saying he wants to play Mr. Sinister. Yeah. No. It would be crazy if they didn't let him Although, it'll be weird to do Sinister without Scott and Gene, so... So maybe they'll be there. Yeah, maybe and, they'll be there. Yeah. Uh, and finally, how long before the inevitable AVX movie? Oh, it's the next Avengers movie. They will do that. Like, there's no question. Like, that's the next <laughs> Avengers movie. You think so? You think I'm right about that? Yeah. Also, I'd like to see the X Force movie that doesn't have anything to do with any of the Rob Liefeld crap. I want, I want, <laughs> I want Wolverine, X twenty three, James Proudstar, um, and Wolfsbane. Like Wolfsbane is there? I so never like, thought you'd see James Proudstar in a movie, but at this point, anything's possible. Oh, he was in the movie. He was. was he, he's, he's in Days of Future Past. He's, he's one of the future people. He's okay, got running okay. off the knives. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. As like a main character that people pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of characters that are, like, represented. But yes. And we might get Bishop. We'll, that would be... We'll, 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 we'll get Bishop for real. I, I want Bishop. I think that'd be great. I don't like Bishop. I think... He, I don't usually either, but I think he could be really fun. No, yeah. I think he's very tweakable. And well, I always make fun of his power, but I think, like, I think you can do cool things. They'll just... They'll just be like, look, the Deadpool movies are doing Cable. We have Cable. He's called Bishop. It's the same thing. That's, uh, yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah, except Cable, <laughs> except the Bishop's power is lamer than Cable's power. Yeah. Yeah, but can you tell me what Cable's power is? Because I can tell you what Bishop's power is. So I was honestly holding that under my hat, assuming that um, I was just being silly and could not remember it. So it really is that undefinable, is it? I don't know what his power is. <laughs> I don't either. Is it just vaguely... Su like? It's like kind he's of... He's a cyborg. Right. It's something, something like tele or psychokinesis. Okay, so he is definitely a mutant. It's Gene... Because yeah, remember, he's, he's, he's the son of Scott the and Gene. The son of Scott and Gene. So like, right. his eye glows because of something with Gene's powers. But I don't know oh. what it does. And you never see him do anything. No, like, he doesn't like shoot beams or like... He, or I move think, stuff around does he have a his does, mind. Does his eye laser... Right, but... But I guess his eye doesn't laser. No, I don't know what no, his powers I, I, are. I think it does, but I always assumed it was because he's a cyborg and he, like, has a power charge thing. And, oh. like, it never occurred to me that was mutant power, even if he does. Yeah. Because it comes out of the... So, it's not an organic eye. So Bishop's power might be dumb, but I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's my counter to that. I still just... If you never heard me say this, my favorite thing about Bishop is that uh, his power only makes sense... And it's funny to think, well, maybe it evolved because of this. Like, in the future, where people are constantly shooting energy weapons at each other, because he, like, he, like, takes charges from energy and he shoots them back out again. Now, to, to be fair, that's not without precedent. That in 2019, like, I don't know how you use that. It's not without precedent. There's, like, weird, specific things. This isn't exactly the same, but, like, there's a mutant whose superpower is he can read and speak in any language. Like, if he's the first mutant in, like, pre-human civilization, he doesn't know he has superpowers. No, he never even... Yeah, <laughs> no, no, and, and that's my favorite thing, is that you, you wouldn't even know you were a mutant. Like, if Magneto ruled, you'd be oppressed among all the other humans just because you're... Like, There's does, no language. Like, does that ever happen? Where, like, you, 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 you are a mutant, but you don't manifest powers, or your powers are so subtle you don't even know you have them? I want to say there is a thing about... I can make freckles all over my body. No one knows I have superpowers. I want to say there is a thing about trauma manifesting your mutation, and it's possible to make it through puberty without getting your, your mutation, but I could be wrong. It's been no, I think that's a thing, but, like, 
Is it possible to have a power that's so subtle you can't even... You would have to be genetically tested for anyone to even buy that you were a mutant? I'm sure somebody's done something like that, right? right? Like that, that, that... I write that story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eric, do you have a rant today? Uh, Can you think of something to complain about? I mean, yes. <laughs> do you want me to go first? I had one. Oh, okay. So my rant is about just societal norms. Um, and like I hate those, those things, are the worst. things, things that, I, that have no control over me. I hate the things that I like don't necessarily sell. And so like, I can complain that they don't, that they don't exist. But the reason they don't exist is because nobody else cares about them as much as I do. Uh, I, I live in this constantly with like the universal monster thing where like, I hate that Marvel doesn't have like a horror line of books. They had them in the 70s. Why can't they have them now? You know why they can't have them now? Because they don't sell. And you know why they don't sell? That's going to be like a 13,000 book or less. And they always kind of suck. Thing. Like, they <laughs> did like they did that that series like a year or two ago where they brought together, it was like Blade and Ghost Rider and like all these characters I, I like and whatnot. And nobody cared. It was written by Victor Gishler. I assumed it sucked. I didn't read it. But then Marvel looks at that and goes, well, see, Supernatural books don't sell, so we can't, we can't. No, I it, it bumps me out that there's not, that there's not like some horror books that... Any of the company, like classic, traditional, like, monsters. But those and don't sound. I feel bad. That makes me feel like I'm part of the problem. You are part of the problem. Yeah, no, I definitely am. Because I'm always... No, I have... I have definitely, like, expanded, like, 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 uh, spread my wings a little bit, but, like, I've always been more or less kind of mainstream guy, and I mostly collect superhero comics, and I'm like, I, I guess I'm part of the problem. But I feel like Universal Monsters are, like, the most mainstream of all horror things. Like, it's so embedded in the culture at this point, like, they're serial. Um, yeah, but that, but, like, you can have a, we have this with a lot of things, right, where things are, like, iconic and, like, archetypical that people like being around and they recognize them and they think they're fun, but they're but not going to sit down and read something about them or watch something yeah, about yeah. them. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, like, they'll go out of their way to actually experience it. A lot of people like the idea of Star Trek and know who Kirk and Spock are, but they're not going to sit down and watch it, you know? Yeah. Um, and you have that, I mean, I think one of the prime examples is Superman. Like, yeah, a lot of people love Superman and know nothing about Superman. Yep, yep. You know, he's an ideal, he's important, and he's an icon, but, you yeah. know... For, I, I'll watch the I'll watch the movies, but forget anything else, right? That's a lot. I mean, a lot, I of, mean, people, Batman has a lot of people have that. Too. But Superman, way more than Batman. Yeah. yeah, but no, yeah, and I just I hate it because like I don't. But then, but, but then I'm I, just saying that like that, that like uh, I feel bad for you because I don't have this as much as you do. Like I think most of the things I really like get made a lot. Yeah. Well, but then like like it, every, everything goes in cycles, right? Like. I'm pretty sure this will come back around, especially if the Blumhouse movies are successful. I will get some of these, but like, yeah, like for the past decade, maybe more. I've had this with Cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk is finally coming back around. I'm getting good Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, but like, I just I hate the like. There's a bunch of these things that I like where I'm like, but no one's making them. The bling, and this is not about comics, but I'm not the, making them because they don't sell. Yeah, this is not about comics. This is about movies before anything. But but uh, I I somebody. Um, responded to some post I wrote the other day, uh, and I don't remember what the what, what the topic was and, and why that why this happened. But I read something somebody posted um, blaming the lack of interest in Universal monsters. Somebody was asking. Oh, I know what it was. It'll probably come up in the letters pages later. Um, somebody was was uh, was asking something about what we think about the Blumhouse thing and if that will be successful. And somebody else responded to it and said that um, they're worried that it even if it's good that. Uh, it won't do well because um, the traditional ideas with those movies are just not scary anymore, and people won't go watch them as horror movies, so they'll have to go watch them as something else, which is why the Dark Universe thing, I think, happened the way it did, where, like, they knew that, and they're like, well, we can't just make those movies like they were. It doesn't scare anyone. If they're not scared, they're not going to go see them. I don't... I don't know if I ultimately agree that that's the appeal of those like like i i would i would go for mood and atmosphere but i see what that person is getting at well see so so i talked to you about this uh because at some point uh this was supposed to be the let's do it again we were, we were matt and i were going to do the 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 your responses and i was talking about this i said there are two ways you can take this you can you can look at that franchise and go this is a franchise that appeals these are franchises that appeal to everyone and like are the best starter horror movies for kids like it's something that's safe so should you make it that and just kind of work within that mold or should you go when these came out they were the scariest things that that was being made and run with that and make R rated horror movies like don't you do you want are you trying to to be close to what they are 
or being close to what they were. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and we, I guess we saw with the mummy kind of the attempt to, to be close to what they they, 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 they they are, which isn't really what it was, but like it was safer. Yeah. I think Blumhouse is going to try and match what they were. I don't think you'll, you'll see... And then the question is, can that be huge? Can it be popular? I think it can. Do you? Um, I mean, like, I don't love the idea of starting with the Invisible Man, but... I do. I think it's a great idea. It, it, it's, it's, it's a better pick to start with than the mummy Dracula Frankenstein. So I guess, or the Wolfman, because we tanked the Wolfman too. Fair, it's I basically all you guys is, is Invisible Man. I didn't know how smart it is to start with. I'm just curious about it. Like that's an that, idea I and, like. And a based lot. on that movie that you, you you told me about, like that guy's gonna be great. Like I, I I'm I'm sure it'll be great. Who's doing it again? It's the upgrade guy. See, I think yeah, I forgot about that. Like, no, like that, that is gonna exciting. Be great, right? It's gonna be great. Yeah, watch Upgrade. I, I will. Because it's will. wonderful. I will. Uh, Eric, my rant is one that uh, you and I talk about all the time, and I want to revisit. I mean, I don't know if I've done this rant. Just but take this section out and put it in the news section for when we talk about the Indus Man. <laughs> well, frankly, the whole X Men topic, really. <laughs> um, so, I want to. I want to go. I want to go back to uh, a thing that you and I talk about all the time, or have talked about in the past, and revisit it because with the Disney Fox buyout, I'm wondering if it's going to be as much of a problem in the future. So this is a like current rant, it's annoying that this is still a problem, and I'm wondering if it could get better. So I'm, this is a rant with a question embedded in it. And that is, uh, a lot of other things in comics have this, but X-Men more than anything. This is an X-Men rant. X-Men more than anything. Um, I, I just uh, watched the first X-Men movie with my kid, and that's why I'm in an X-Men mood, and, uh, and, and came up with this topic today. But, I, but, but this has been annoying, and you keep making fun of me about it, where... Um, the comics keep regurgitating old stories, and I keep trying to dabble back in and buy new X-Men, and you're like, but you have all this Claremont, why don't you read the Claremont? And, and all they're doing is regurgitating that stuff that you already know exists. And a lot of it that I own and have not read. Yeah, and you're going back to it, you're like, oh, Bishop's here! I like Bishop from the 90s! I, I'm not a Bishop. Not a Bishop. I, know, I know, I know, I know. But the, uh, but like, I just keep, I think of myself now in a way I didn't used to as, as an X-Men fan, and I want, to, I want to keep up with that, I want to know what's going on current, and then I'm like, Every time I get back in, I don't feel like I've really missed all that much because they're kind of just spinning their wheels, right? And a lot of it has been because of licensing things and merchandise things and uh, Marvel doesn't want to create new characters that uh, somebody else is making money on, and that's why they're not. That's why we haven't made new characters. So is it possible that with it all under one roof now, we could finally write X Men the way we should write X Men, create new says, characters, keep 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 moving forward? Rob, Rob Liefeld says that we are. And he's doing it with his thing, and, but so, but, I'm, but I'm wondering if that will be if, if if that will go mainstream. And the reason I ask you is. We have the ability to create new characters with everything else, and much of the time we still just spin our wheels. You know, with Superman, we keep every few years going back to the death of Superman stuff, and uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, with, with so many different things. Like, can we finally get to a Claremont Age of X Men again, where yeah, we have all this stable of characters, we use some of them, but we also keep coming up with with new things and new ideas and, and, and moving forward and evolving it. Okay, so, so so there's two things. One is I think one of the biggest problems that X Men has right now is the constant changeover, like, I I haven't read X Men since Bendis left because you're saying somebody needs to be on that book for five someone years. needs to be on that book for five to ten years, and one that's the only way I think you consistently get new X Men. Here's the problem with X Men: this happens with a lot of comics, but the X Men I think it happens with worse than anything. Yeah, what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of new characters that a writer's going to create, and then. Also, while he's creating those characters, you're not going to like them, and you're going to ask, where's Rogue and Gambit and, 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 and Bishop? Uh, because you love Bishop. And then, and then when that person leaves... He's got the, the best power. The, the next writer is going to come on, and he's going to go, well, no one liked any, any of those new mutants. Like so, I'm, so I'm going to go back to, the, to, 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 more, to a more classic team. It's going to be Psylocke and Rogue and Bishop, because everyone loves Bishop. And then... And then... He's going to slowly introduce new mutants. Yeah. And then he's going to leave. The next writer's going to ignore all of his. This is this is what we did from Fractions Lord. It's a vicious cycle. Uh, yeah, yeah. We introduced a bunch of new teen, teen uh, X-Men between like 2008 and like 2012. And they're all gone. You don't see any of them. And before that, uh, what was that? It wasn't Generation X. It was New X-Men. Uh, new X-Men was, was a whole new line of 
all new mutant teenagers. You've never heard of any of them unless you were reading X-Men comics in those specific years. X-Men does keep creating new characters even before this happened. Okay. And we just keep ignoring them because they're not Scott... It's Scott, Storm, Gene, um, you know, like... Right. And Bishop. Yeah, 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 and Bishop. <laughs> Everybody's favorite Bishop. Well, um, and, and it's funny, because uh, you made me think of Avengers Arena, because it's like, well, we've got some characters that... Oh, we killed a bunch of them there. That, 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 that like, most people didn't care. Like, some people were very upset, of course, um, and Dennis Hopeless got a lot of letters, but, like, you know, we... we here are these expendable characters, so Hopeless, when he started that book, I read the first couple issues, it's good, but or I like what I read of it. But I was like, meant to read it. Um, the, he, he opens that book and he's making a deal like, like, isn't it cool we can kill off characters? Like, yeah, it's, it's all these expendable characters. Yeah. Um, so you think it will, it will still be a problem just in a different way, even I if you th don't have I the think, business issues. I think culturally and nostalgically, X-Men can never move forward. Uh, and I think that might be true for all of Marvel's books at this point. Yeah. I think we're stuck in... That's why you need another line again. Yeah. I think we're stuck in this perpetual cycle That's of... That's what was fun about X-Men 92, is I could have all those characters I love, but then if X-Men theoretically was doing something else, I could enjoy that too, you know? The problem with, the, the, the problem with all superhero mainstream superhero comics is we want something new, but then when we get something new, we go, well, but where's Magneto? Where's... Oh, oh, so, 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 so you have a seven-year run on Batman, and uh, you don't use any of Batman's villains? What's the point of that? You create what, Why create all new villains? Why don't you use the Riddler or Two-Face? Like, but we're the Batman. Yeah, yeah. So, no. I, I, think, I think whether we, we want to admit it or not, we don't actually want that to happen. And you think even though I'm saying I want that, I don't actually want that. You don't actually want I that probably because don't. you You're weren't there right. for any of the other times we've done it. Yeah. Um... Except for Gold Balls, because Gold Balls is legend, and like he'll, he'll live on forever. But, um, he, but he was there with... Uh, and he, we haven't used him since Bendis left. That's not true. Has it not? No. Uh, he, he... Well, I don't, I don't... I actually don't know I that thought he moved sure. over to Spider-Man. I was saying that was Spider-Man where Bendis was. Well, he did, but I don't know that he's not still there, because I haven't been reading that stuff, so... Well, but he's not in the X-Men books. Well, no, that's true. He's not in the X-Men books, but he's still... He's still but and he was, I bet you all those other characters that Bendis introduced his run also are in recurring. Right, but it was Bendis who was writing that, so I don't really know what point you're making. You know what I mean? Like, Well, I mean, he, he, he took gold balls with him, I guess. When Bendis creates characters, he tends to be the only one who uses them. That's true. So I don't know that, that the whole X-Men thing really has anything to do with that. Okay, like, but I'm just saying that like that's another in the line of... Because like, he had his... Uh, there, was a, there was a character that he had, I can't remember who it was, at the same time as he had uh, the, the ultimate cloak and dagger running around, um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a chick that he, I, I think he made oh, up. Oh, Bombshell. Bombshell, there it is. Um, and she came over, and nobody else wrote her except for him. Like, yeah, but he left all those other X-Men characters. And like, I don't think that they've been used in, the, in any of the X-Men books. I can also list right off right a bunch of characters that. that Fraction created that nobody's used since Fraction left. Okay. Um, All right. Like, like this is a this is a perpetual cycle. I'm glad I asked you that question because you know more about that than I, than I do. I didn't think of that. All right. Well, uh, folks, I think you want that. I just don't think you want that. Yeah. Yeah. No. I I think you're absolutely right. Because um, if you looked at the X Men cover, that was all new characters. You would go, I don't know any of these are. Well, it's all hindsight, right? We're we're like, because I'm thinking, but but like, look at the glory days when Claremont was creating all these different characters. But I came to it late, and I already had heard of those characters. Like, and it was also. Like foundational, yeah. Like I think if Claremont had never left, he could have kept creating characters. And we, we we could, and they could have kept getting popular. And and I think because he rotated that team constantly. Yeah. I think if someone came on and made a new property, you could do that yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I don't think you can do it with X Men. Okay. I, I I think I think I think unfortunately the second Claremont left, X Men crystallized. Uh huh. And, and the and the X Men and the nineties cartoon didn't help that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. And, and any time we do something, when, when Morrison came in and was like, all right, I'm going to do these different things, the second he left, we were like, okay, that was too different. Um, well, let's put everything back together. Uh, Magneto didn't actually murder everybody. And like... Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's going to do it for GNN today. Uh, Eric, thanks a lot for the uh, lecture that explained why my rant was wrong. <laughs> and uh, leave us your comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, what are your predictions for the X-Men moving forward with the MCU? What do you want to happen? Uh, feel free to answer my questions or just uh, in the comments say just briefly what you think uh, is most likely to happen with that. And uh, Eric and I are going to go ahead and move on now to the comic vault. And uh, we're going to talk about Ultimate Spider-Man. So, uh, no, Master Devil. 
Oh, that's right. We gotta do that first. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do Venice. Sorry, so we're gonna do Venice Daredevil, and then we'll get to Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, lots of comics today uh, to do. We're gonna do at least three vaults. So look forward to that. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching in the playlist, just keep it running, and you'll get to that video. And otherwise, if you just clicked on this, we sure appreciate it. Thanks again. I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric. We'll see you next time.